Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020. The poem that I'm going to read to you today is by one of my favorites, Seamus Heaney. Uh, he lived from 1939 to 2013, and he was an Irish poet. And last year, a collection came out from FSG uh, called 100 Poems. It's a collection of poems that I've mentioned before on this podcast, and it was curated by Heaney's family. And there's a poem in here that I wanted to read to you. I've recently found myself going back more and more to my most favorite poets, including Richard Wilbur, who I read from last week, and uh, Mr. Heaney, who I'm going to read from today. So if I, I turn to some of these favorites here on the podcast a time or two too often, I hope you'll forgive me for that. But this is the railway children. This is how it goes. When we climbed the ropes of the cutting, we were eye-level with the white cups of the telegraph poles and the sizzling wires. Like lovely free hand, they curved for miles east and miles west beyond us, sagging under their burden of swallows. We were small and thought we knew nothing worth knowing. We thought words traveled the wires in the shiny pouches of raindrops each one seated full with the light of the sky, the gleam of the lines, and ourselves so infinitesimally scaled we could stream through the eye of a needle. Back in 2008, Heaney chatted with NPR for All Things Considered, and he actually read a portion of this poem, so you can, you can check out him reading this poem. It's more interesting to hear him read it than to hear me read it, I admit. But in that conversation, he said this. I've always thought of poems as stepping stones in one's own sense of oneself. Every now and again, you write a poem that gives you self-respect and steadies you're going a little bit farther out into the stream. At the same time, you have to conjure the next stepping stone because the stream, we hope, keeps flowing. The challenge for the writer book by book is to conjure a stepping stone that carries you forward. Also, this was autobiographical recording, as it were. I wanted to leave a record just of some stages of life. And they talk a little bit about this particular poem. He knew recites some Gerard Manley Hopkins. And they have a really fascinating conversation about poetry in general. But this idea of poetry being stepping stones um, is, is so interesting because I think on the one hand... It's the stepping stone for the poet, as Mr. Heaney is describing. Uh, the, the challenge, he says, for the writer is to conjure a stepping stone that carries you forward, gives you a sort of momentum and a way of um, moving on in the, in, the, in the murky or the, uh, the, in the midst of water that will carry you wherever it wants to. And the stepping stones can help you keep your balance, can help you uh, have a sure footing. And in a way, that's what poetry does for us as readers as well. You know, um, the poems may be record of some stages of life for the poet, as Heenim says in what I just read. And it may be the, the balance keeper, the balance maintainer for the poet. But it's also that for, for us as well. I mean, we can mark our lives by so many things. I think a lot of us who love poetry can mark our lives by poems. Um, by poems we were loving at a given time, or the poems that helped us get through a hard time, the poems that we use to mark joyful times. Uh, at our wedding, my wife and I had a Wendell Berry poem on our, on our wedding favors. We had these bookmarks that we gave to people with a Wendell Berry poem. So we mark our lives by the things that we love. And if we love poetry, that's one of the ways that we mark our lives. And you can see the way, you know, this is a poem remember, about, about the nature of imagination, about the way we remember things when we're young. And so in a way, it's a poem about the way we mark our lives. It's a poem about the way, uh, the way our, we mark our lives with a sort of poetry, like our imagination is a sort of, the nature of imagination is to be sort of poetic, to remember the poetry of moments, the sort of, I think, what nostalgia is. It's the sort of pain that, that the, the magic of a specific moment is no longer with us. Um, and, so, and so it's the, the poetry of the moment is what our imagination is is glomming onto and keeping with us. And that's, that's what this poem makes me think of. It makes me, it makes it seem like that's the way he was viewing this image, the, these things that he used to go see as a child and the way that he used to, you know, the way he's able to 
understand the way he thought about things then uh, when he was a child. Now, and poets, of course, are, are better at interpreting the sort of subtext of the moments of our lives than the average person is, better than I am, better than many of you are, I'm going to assume. Um, and that's, you know, the nature of being a great poet. That's why we remember great poets. But the things that a great poet can do in that way are sort of microcosms of the way all of us work, I think. Um, so those are some things that this poem makes me think about. It's a poem that I really, really, really love. Um, come back to pretty often. Here it is again, The Railway Children. When we climbed the slopes of the cutting, we were eye-level with the white cups of the telegraph poles and the sizzling wires. Like lovely freehand, they curved for miles east and miles west beyond us, sagging under their burden of swallows. We were small and thought we knew nothing worth knowing. We thought words traveled the wires in the shiny pouches of raindrops, each one seeded full with the light of the sky, the gleam of the lines and ourselves so infinitesimally scaled. We could stream through the eye of a needle. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.